fight against housekeeping and our house starts to look different. And in no time, our house is crammed with art. Yeah, you know that nice Danish teakwood furniture? Buried under an avalanche of sculptures. Yeah, no room for the dining table. It's uh, shoved into the garage. Now we eat dinner holding plates on our laps. Entering our house, there's a two foot wide path through a maze of sculptures, light boxes, wall hanging, don't get your head on that lantern. We're living in a crazy carnival fun house, a wacky Disney ride through Heartland. Then in 1964, Momo has a pivotal experience. I borrowed a library book on Navajo weaving and tried to set up a loom following the drawings in the book. The resulting weaving was so distorted, I knew I was missing a few steps. So I signed up for a weaving class, a very structured, traditional class and a good basic beginning. I bought a two-harness table loom and began weaving at home. I decided to switch from ceramics to weaving because when raising four young children, it was much easier to take a break to cook dinner and do household chores. While most weaving students are churning out placemats and baby blankets, Momo incorporates discarded mechanical parts into her weaving. <laughs> she weaves into tree branches and found objects. She weaves into Max's welded creations, finds innovative ways to weave doll figures, how to expand an already completed weaving. Momo is constantly inventing, improvising, making it up as she goes along the same way she approaches life. And Momo's weaving projects take over. Balls of yarn are everywhere. Long poles suspended from the ceiling support multiple weavings going on simultaneously. Mom uses a ladder to work on the higher sections, her feet dangling in our faces as my sisters and I argue over what to watch on television. I was a single mother of four kids from when the youngest was three and the oldest was nine. I would sit around in the living room weaving it. That way, they could fight all they wanted to. <laughs> I really, I think, escaped into the weaving. It's funny, um, especially when the kids were growing up, there are different things that would happen while I'd be weaving, and I'd look at that weaving later, and I could recall that something happened and I would feel like I was weaving that event into my weaving. In fiber and in memory, Momo records her journey. A single mother with four kids and no money, with visions of being an artist and no illusions of security. Momo was going where few Asian women of her generation have gone before, and we go with her. Well, you know, when you talk about change, I think there was a physical change, too, because mm. she started to dress differently. She, um, her appearance changed in how she did her hair and how she, the kind of clothes she wore. Because we had a funny experience one time. We, we were at the airport to see Mom and Papa off. Someone said, when they saw us, they said, Oh, I didn't know the gypsies still lived around here. <laughs> and they were looking at Momo, and we, we just both laughed because that was so funny. But, you know, she wasn't afraid to <laughs> mix things and, you know, wear unusual things. We become a rare breed! <laughs> Asian-American hippies! 